What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today we're going to learn how to simplify a scene and maintain its realistic impression, which is what I love the most to be able to have that sense of realism in the scene. So let me talk to you about uh, this scene here. Uh, I actually did three tests. Um, and because I know it's a bit hard, it may be a bit hard to see from there, I'm gonna probably add a picture somewhere around here. So basically I took the perfect uh, picture in uh, the hometown where I grew up uh, and it's against the light, so the light shined at me. And what this almost always creates is a very strong contrast and it simplifies the scene because you don't see any of the details in the shadows, you just see one big shadow with very uh, mild or small changes in it. So in in some sense this is the kind of a perfect scene to simplify um, and I did a few tests uh, and what I want to do is for us to reduce the number of values okay so instead of trying to uh, paint the value that you see meaning this is a 4 out of 10 this is a 9 out of 10 this is an 8 out of 10 we're gonna do none of that we're just gonna minimize or dump down the scene into three values we're gonna have white we're gonna have gray and black and that's it. The, the gray is gonna be just one unified gray without any variation in it. What this does is it helps simplify the scene for the viewer and many times the additional information is excessive. You don't really uh, need it, okay? So this is one of my favorite things to do and really uh, at the heart of what I'm trying to achieve with my art. I wanna uh, have it be as simplified as possible, but still look realistic and have some interesting details in it. Okay, we're gonna get started with the process now and I really hope you'll enjoy it. I think there's a lot to learn from this one. Okay, so I'll start by uh, drawing the scene and the simplification will start at the level of the drawing. Uh, so I wanna start with the main shapes. This is what I'm most concerned with in the horizon line. And I'm actually uh, painting this the same scale as my reference photo so I can actually measure on my laptop and bring in uh, the distances. It's not a 100% accurate way to do it, but we're not trying to be 100% accurate here. I'm actually deliberately trying to simplify the scene. So this is where the horizon line lies. Now I'm trying to compare where the road cuts the edge of the photo uh, compared to the where the horizon line is. And what I find is that it's around here, if I'm not mistaken somewhere around here. So we have the, the road curving. Now the road isn't on the middle as well, so it's here. And this is really, again, one of another one of those rare reference photos against the light. Uh, you can see so many details and it's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, reference photo to work from. Now the road at the bottom hits about the middle point here, but it does curve significantly more to the right. So at the, the height or the extreme end of the apex of the curve, it's around here. And then I'm turning it and it meets the bottom line like this. And that way we get that uh, feeling of a winding road. Hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? Um, so I'm placing it in here. I'm gonna later on place the rest of the major details, but let's say the uh, zebra stripes are around here and they'll end somewhere around here. And now I'm just connecting this using a straight line. So here's a good uh, method of drawing zebra stripes. Uh, you just draw the uh, top and bottom edges of them. Now we're following the perspective, okay, uh, of the curving road. And so the stripes are gonna go like this, and then they're gonna spread out the more they're headed outwards away from the turn, okay? So this is the first one. We're gonna need just two of them and you're gonna understand why in just a few moments uh, because the rest of the road is gonna be sh completely reflecting the sunlight. So the indication of darkness is only gonna be around this area. Um, now we have to put in the major uh, mass uh, that is the, the trees and the background, a very dark part. So I'm just taking some measurements. So around the edges, it's this height approximately. Uh, the right side is going to be around this tall, so not very tall. And I'm just going to block it in uh, very simply. Um, I just want to make sure that I get some of the distances right. So here we have that uh, electricity pole around here. Now I'm going to start with the rooftop on the very edge. I'm going to drop that kind of line, then it goes like this. We're going to, we're going to have a highlight somewhere around here. Uh, actually, while experimenting with the scene, I drew the, I negative painted around it, but this time I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to uh, just add that later on with a uh, white pen, uh, white ink. Um, and then 
this goes around here. We have this kind of uh, electricity thing going. Um, and then we have another pole right here that I'm gonna just make sure I get the height correctly. So yeah, approximately all the way to here. Then we have this part of it protruding out with the street light. Okay, and I'm gonna let the brush later on do most of the of the work here, but I'm just trying to get some basic indications of where I'm gonna place things later on, okay? I'm gonna put this box here. And this comes actually all the way down to the uh, zebra stripes. Uh, that should be a little thinner, I only now see it, so I'm gonna make a correction here. It's okay erasing. Uh, I recommend using a kneaded eraser like that. Uh, that'll allow you to uh, erase without leaving debris and, and it's quite gentle on the paper's texture. Uh, the paper I'm using is a Paul Rubin um, brand. I wasn't familiar with it until uh, a brand called Art. I'm gonna put them down in the description box below, sent it to me uh, to try it out and it was actually quite uh, decent so I've been using it a lot mainly for my uh, exercises sessions but uh, for some final stuff as well. Uh, so now we've got this part here that's a little dark and it's moving together with the uh, perspective. And now I'm gonna block in this background and then the car and we're done. So we have some cars here at the bottom, another car right around here. That's gonna be, again, these are very small details that will barely be visible, but it is important to get some indication of them. And right around here we have these two trees so I'm gonna put here and we have this uh, electricity pole in the background like this. Uh, this actually connects here. I'm tempted to put in these details before I get the most of this uh, area, but that's fine. Placing in some details here. This moves uh, into somewhere around here. Now around this we have some several uh, tall trees yet again. So I'm gonna um, make these a little smaller to create some interest. Then we have smaller, lower hanging trees. Then around where the car is gonna be, we have these uh, bushes. And here, that's important, we have this uh, very interesting looking uh, rooftop of a building. I'm gonna try and preserve its shape and I'm even gonna add a chimney. The chimney originally was here. I'm gonna place it here. And now, uh, we need to place in the car. So it starts around here that intersects with the road, goes all the way down here. Now we have the shadow of the car, which will help us place in the car. So I'm placing the shadow in the perspective. It's gonna be a bit uh, of a complex shape, but I'm gonna try and simplify it for you. Uh, so we have the tire here. Then this moves together with the perspective, back tire there. It's barely visible. This is all gonna be in the shadow, but still it's important to indicate some of that. Uh, so that we can draw it accurately. <laughs> then we've got uh, the top part where the trunk, where the engine is, so some something like this. I'm gonna fix that in just a moment, add some more details. We have the mirror here. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be too uh, accurate necessarily. I just wanna get a very simple impression of the car. It should be much shorter, so I'm gonna break it down like this. This doesn't exist anymore. And then the rooftop here, a mirror there. And hopefully you'll see soon the light and shadow is what's gonna make this look like a real car and pop. I'm trying not to uh, overdo it, but hopefully if we do everything right, this will indeed end up reading like a car. Um, and just a few details here for the door handlebars, a bit of a thing here. And I think with that, we're actually uh, ready to start painting this. Oh, I just need to indicate where this shadowy area ends. We have the curb here. Um, and here we have a bit of a, some other highlights on cars that I'll have to leave later on. Here we also have some highlights on cars that I have to make sure that I include. So the bottom part is wrapped up here, uh, kind of around here. And now here I have to indicate also where uh, the shadowy part ends. So I would say we have this kind of a detail here. I think this is actually a telephone booth. Uh, I don't know why it's there. I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure it's functional still. 
Uh, we have these uh, two poles here casting some shadow. This casts a shadow over here. This casts a shadow as well. Uh, now this is where the shadowy part ends, so around here. And we have also a few poles here, kind of stopping cars from entering this mini park or resting space. Uh, and with that, we're actually done with most of the things we'll need to paint. Uh, so I'm gonna go over the plan, then I'm gonna prepare some stuff and we'll start painting this. So first, I'm gonna drop a wash that's gonna negative paint around that strong sunlight. I'm gonna go all the way down, leave some highlights here for the very shiny road. Go over everything, leave highlights on top of the cars and all of that good stuff. Then after finishing this, I'm gonna put another wash that's gonna be much darker that will connect all of this shape because as I mentioned, we're uh, reducing the number of values and we're connecting as many shapes as possible. Okay, uh, and hopefully that'll be enough. Then we'll add some details with my uh, white gel pen. Uh, and this is it. This is gonna be a fairly straightforward one, rather simple painting into the light, uh, but still can be a challenge. So uh, let me arrange some stuff and we'll get started. Okay, so we'll get started painting this. Now I wanted to mention, this is a perfect opportunity to use all of the paints that you barely get to use. For me, uh, these are the quinacridone burnt orange, undersea green, uh, I've got the carbazole violet, which I use only as supportive paint. So these paints tend to, you tend to have a lot of these and it's just a good opportunity to use them for these kinds of uh, almost monochromatic uh, exercise sessions. So the first thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna pre-wet some area around where the sun is. Now there's a good reason for that because I wanna achieve uh, a blurry effect around it, okay? I wanna uh, get this, you see here? I wanna do this wet and wet and that way it'll kind of blend uh, nicely onto the paper. Right now you can't see it, but in a moment when I'll continue uh, the, the sky wash, you'll see how it blends uh, nicely and leaves that very gentle highlight, okay? So again, I'm, I'm working rather um, quickly here because there isn't too much to pay attention to. The one thing I do want to pay attention to and I will blend out some of that just very gently, even though it will uh, blend itself out. Um, the one thing I want to make sure is once I get to where the highlights or some of the highlights are, this is where I want to make sure I preserve them, okay? So now, going into this area and I still don't have any major highlights. This uh, kind of side rooftop I'm gonna place in um, with my white, uh, white pen as I mentioned, so I don't need to preserve that. Now here I'm going just a little bit darker once I get to this area. And just filling in those areas. Now here I have to start being careful and um, paint around some of the major highlights. So that'll be around the rooftop of this car and around some other cars here and details that I have uh, like this. Very gently, just leave a few stray uh, highlights for, for later on. You never know when you're gonna need them. So around here and there, kind of like this. Now this area is very uh, well lit by the sun. So I'm gonna leave that mostly uh, empty and I'll connect the, all of the shadows literally to, to one another. So I'm going over here, connecting this area, leaving a bit of a highlight for a mirror and going around here. And I just have to make sure that I remember uh, to, that my edges are drying, okay? Now here, I'm gonna place that in. There's gonna be a gentle highlight here around the side of the curb like this. This is all in the shadow. Here, almost everything is in the shadow, but these small uh, details for the um, handlebars for the door. And I'm seeing, I'm, I see that I'm running out of space in the camera, so I'll soon pause the video and recharge, or re, just delete some stuff. Uh, so Nick is going right around here. Here, I don't have any important highlights, so I'm just covering it up real fast. And then, around here, just being careful uh, not to cover my zebra stripes, like so, and it may seem super dark right now, but don't worry, the moment uh, it'll dry and it will dry very light, uh, you'll see this for what it is. 
it's much lighter than you think because uh, the paint is very wet. I'm using a very wet wash. That's always uh, confusing when you look at it. So now this here and this part is very light. Uh, I did miss one highlight here that I'm going to try and recover. But even if I don't recover, I can just place it back in with my white gel pen. Um, like this. And it's, that's it. I think I'm going to let this now uh, dry. I missed the spot. I'm going to let this uh, dry for now. Um, delete some stuff from the camera so I have more space and come back with the second wash. You're going to see when it dries uh, what I need. Before we move on, I just thought I'd show you the paper because I think it has a really cool uh, wrapping. Um, so here we go, Paul Rubens, this is 300 grams. Um, Acid-free, most of the good characteristics of a good paper. Uh, the material is indeed different and you can see by the way the previous experiment I did for this very same scene. So the material, material feels very different from uh, Arsh and Saunders Waterford. It does remind me a little more uh, of Fabriano paper. Uh, so it's not my favorite, but it's still decent, it's very good, it doesn't buckle too much, and it gets the job done, so um, it wouldn't be fair to say it's not a good paper, it is actually a really good uh, quality, and it comes, uh, as you can see here in the block that you just cut out uh, the different sheets. Uh, so now let's zoom back in and continue with this one. Okay, so continuing with the process, and I don't remember if I said it... Uh, uh, if I stated it, but we're gonna do, um, we're gonna finish this painting in literally two washes. So that was the first one. Now we're gonna add a dark wash for the for the dark values, and that's it. We're done. I'm just gonna unlock my <laughs> Mac uh, so that I can see the reference photo. Here we go. Um, and I'm gonna start from left to right, okay, and make sure that I get an even wash. Uh, and this is really going to be uh, a dark one. Uh, so I'm adding a lot of pigment, as you can see, it takes some time. I'm adding all three of my uh, secondary colors to create this uh, nice um, muted color. Uh, and now we're gonna get started left to right. So this is maybe a little too dark and too much paint on the brush, so like so. So here we have the shape of that uh, rooftop that I told you about earlier. And I'm just covering up all of this area, everything that's in the, the background. Now this shadow uh, reaches all the way here, like so. I'm just filling up the areas from uh, behind, and I'm actually gonna go over uh, some areas that I covered earlier, so like the car here. And if I'm silent for a few moments, it's just because I need to focus. Um, this should be dark, so I'm covering that up as well. The side of the car also should be darker. And I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I think now is a good time to do that. So a synthetic Princeton brush, a trusty one. I love this one a lot. And I'm going to start just making sure I don't lose my edges. This is the most important part here. And slowly you'll see how this really comes to life. We have a very small dark line inside this um, for the, uh, I think it's a bicycle kind of holder thing. This is the front of the car, this is the tire, and it connects all the way to the shadow. This tire should be a little rounder, and this front part should be a little larger. And connect it to the shadow and, and I'm reviving this edge. You see I'm going back to it, I'm revisiting it and I'm keeping it alive. Um, here we have this tree here and again the details don't matter as much as long as you nail the value um, then it's gonna look really good. Okay now here I don't need that corner. I'm gonna leave some highlights for the door handles. Very small and gentle, as, as gentle as I can be in this smaller piece. Um, and I think I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can better see the details. Here we go, so now hopefully uh, you can better see what I'm doing. And we have this small gap around here and this connects to the back tire and closing off the shadow like this. <laughs> this should reach all the way to here. This should be closed off like this, I believe. Um, another small line here. 
make the mirror a little smaller, I exaggerated a bit, and moving on with this uh, background wash. And hopefully this can, uh, this reads well as what it's supposed to be, which is a car. And, and here we have some other cars in the background like this, barely any details visible. So you have to be very uh, careful here. This is the shadow under the car. Moving on here, uh, we have another bit of a, taller tree and here we have two very tall trees getting these as quickly and, and roughly as possible really because we don't have much time um, I mean t we do I have time but I just don't have a lot of time because I don't want any edges to uh, dry on me uh, later on we can correct some of the shapes using my uh, white pen um, and these kinds of trees have this bit of a texture here I'm gonna add some of that just that it reads better like this and here we have this kind of a line now this area is dark so I'm gonna do that right now darken this spot and this is really to the point of abstraction um, I'm, I'm barely describing what's in it you see it's just it's you can you're supposed to just understand that it's cars and most viewers will understand with no problem um, we have another one at the very front that I'm gonna even be able to add some more details to like this. And again, hopefully that reads well. Now onto these buildings that are quite important. Um, recharging the paint real fast. Now we have this thing as well with all of its kind of more intricate shapes like this roofed up like that, we have this straight pole here, fill this area up, here I could negative paint, I'm gonna try like this and then later on I can fix this shape if I choose to, like this but it's pretty good, and now we have to move a little fast, so we have this kind of thing here, Rooftop. I'm gonna add some more water to add some flow. And now this is the telephone booth. That I wonder why they keep there. Like this. Like that. Now the shadow comes all the way up to this point. Okay, and this is where it's gonna end. Uh, like that. Now we have these four poles here. They all cast the shadow to the side this line continues all the way to the bottom and now we'll also continue its top part um, so this goes on to here all the way up here a few small details there I'm gonna add the wires later on with a bit of a smaller brush there are some details there and here I have to be a bit careful this is a relatively gentle line there we go, this is the street light. Uh, this continues all the way here. Then it kind of ends. Now we do have that dark spot around the, the curb. Um, there's the pole holding up the telephone booth. We have two poles here next to the side, the uh, zebra stripes now I'm gonna put this there's this grassy area near the bottom so I'm gonna use a bit more green for that even though it's not really that visible it doesn't matter and I'm gonna fill up that area here again not much is necessary to really uh, indicate the details here or anything like that now I'm just gonna add some darker values to these poles here this is the actual phone inside the booth, so that's important. Um, here we have some different details like this. I do want the bottom part of this structure to be a little darker. It's gonna dry a little lighter. Connected to this darker area here. And darken this up. This casts a shadow over here, this casts a shadow over here, this casts a shadow over there, and believe it or not, we're almost done with this scene. Uh, all we have to do is just 
add some details, but before that, I do need to let that dry a bit so that we can actually add those uh, white uh, white lines and different highlights that we may have missed or haven't covered. And also here, there is a strong shadow under the curb. Um, let's make it a little longer. And I think, let's get the shape of this car a little more accurately in here. And with that, I really think we're done with this stage. So, uh, you know what I can do? I can already add some of the wires here. I'm gonna zoom out a bit, and I'm gonna use my rigor brush uh, to get those lines in. Now I have to be a little careful here um, to get them in one go, and ergonomically, I would have lifted this whole thing up, but I want you to see what I'm doing, so I won't do that. So here we go, that's one, that's two. Let's get rid of some of the paint here. That's three and four. Let's connect here. We have another runny wire going that way. We actually have another one going like this. I'm gonna try and get it in one go. Here we go. Um, we have some uh, wires running back there, like this. This is gonna help us a lot later on with the white, uh, uh, white pen. And we have these lines that I'm gonna have to be very careful because it's kind of, you see, against my natural movement of the wrist, so I kind of messed it up. That's fine, I'm gonna go slower maybe this time. And hopefully this gets the point across. At least it feels like uh, run, uh, wires running. We do have that small thing around here as well, like this. Should have gotten it to be thinner, but that's fine. Let's try another one. And maybe we'll make these a little less prominent. This one as well. Trying to lift some of that up, but it's a bit hard to lift. This uh, The carbazole violet makes it hard to lift. And also the paper isn't that great for lifting, but uh, hopefully all the details are in uh, and this reads clearly. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is allow it some time to dry and then come back with some final details that will make some areas of this pop. Okay, so this is fully dry now and it's time for some finishing touches. Um, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna do some touches in black and white, okay? So first off, there are a few details on the car that I did want to get in. In one of the preparation sessions, I got them in and I, they just really enhanced the look of the car. So like this. Um, now, I think this is <laughs> really all I wanted to do with the black uh, edit, edit, additives. Now, uh, I have this uh, white gel pen uh, that I want to use. I think I want to correct. First, I want to add this kind of division. You see between the the front uh, shield and the and the right side. And hopefully, you can tell what huge of a difference that made. Uh, now, I just wanted to bring out some of this shape, like so. Um, maybe. There should be like the uh, mirror here and maybe just a touch of that and you don't want to overdo that effect. Now you have these wires running across. They actually connect to uh, this kind of a pole that's around here. So I want to get that in and then connect it to the wires, okay? Uh, and I just need to use that on a different surface because sometimes the pen stops working. So we get these wires running around here we go. Um, there is a very gentle line around here that I wanted to get. And this also connects here. And then these run around towards the back. And here we have a few highlights on the kind of poles. We have some here as well that I wanted to get in. Now you can see it did make a bit of a difference. Um, on the cars, I would add on this car a bit of a highlight here, a bit of a highlight there, maybe even bring out the top part of the car using that highlight. <laughs> what else? Maybe just some touches here and there, some details. Who knows what these are, but just some stuff. It could be even a person. I considered adding a person to the scene, but I decided not to for now. Um, we have another wire running kind of like that. I don't know where it comes from, but it's there. You can add a bit of a highlight here. Bit of a highlight here, I would say, as well. Uh, this 
board also has uh, a bit of light around here, like this. And all of these things make really small differences, but they can help. I think also, um, maybe just a very gentle line across the rooftop here. Um, and yeah, I think this is it. So I'm gonna sign this uh, right now and that'll conclude the painting. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the process. Try to keep it a little shorter than, uh, than usual or than the last few because uh, A, it takes a long time to edit these things uh, and B, I'm just afraid that you know people don't have time to watch. Um, so I'm trying to keep this one relatively short for your enjoyment. Hopefully uh, my speaking while painting skills improve or my painting while speaking skills improve. Uh, you'll let me know in a comment down below. And actually before we do that two things, I'm just gonna remove the tape and I also wanted to give you an overall uh, overview of the whole thing because I haven't showed you I was zoomed in so I always uh, get requests to remove the tape so this is exactly what we're gonna do now and you'll see what beautiful frame is created around uh, this mini small painting okay so already it looks much much better and last one and here we go so this is the painting I hope you enjoyed this one and now we can finally wrap it up so this is it, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. As you can see, this is uh, the first test that I did. Then I did uh, this one and finally, this was the version that you saw uh, on video. I'm very pleased with it. And as you can see, the, the white gel pen is a really nice little trick uh, if you wanna add those highlights later on. As you know, I hate masking fluid. I have no problems with anyone who uses it. I just am not good at it and I find that it never gets the effect that I want so instead what I do is either uh, preserve my highlights like I did here in this corner or I actually add them later on but very rarely do I need to do that or with opaque paint same thing um, so hopefully you enjoyed this and you can see how you can just take any scene some th scenes are easier to do than others but this one was perfect and you just simplify it you just dumb it down to the uh, to a very minimum uh, amount of values and what this does is it makes things easier for the viewer and when one of the, the more common mistakes I see with uh, people who are maybe even a little more advanced is that still there's too much going on and it's hard for the viewer to I guess focus on one thing and understand what the main center of focus is and this these aren't things that happen on a conscious level you ideally want the viewer to just look at the picture or the painting or whatever it is photograph, uh, the this, this sculpture, and you want them to figure out what they're looking at alone. They shouldn't need any uh, guidance to do that. Um, so hopefully this will help you with that side of things. This is, as you've seen, also great, uh, a great exercise for um, uh, using the colors or the paints that you use less frequently. I don't know why the iPhone plays around with the contrast all the time. But in any case, this is a good opportunity for you to use up the paints that you use more rarely um, and, and, and the, the leftovers on the palette that you don't want to uh, throw off. Uh, this is the perfect uh, way to use them. Uh, and yeah, this is it. I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to receive notifications of new videos. If you want to learn how to draw like me, be sure to check out my beginner's drawing course in the description box below. It's always, almost always the first link there. And with that, we'll wrap up today. Thank you once again for watching and I will talk to you again real soon.